Hey Gifted Crafters, welcome back for another Saturday Crafternoon. Thank you all for joining. I know this is a busy weekend for a lot of people out there trying to get their shopping in and doing so many things. So I really appreciate you joining today. Now, my name is Nancy with Gifts HQ. And if you're tuning in for the first time, welcome. I really appreciate you tuning in today. It was really a lot of fun and I hope you enjoy yourself. Um, on this channel, we just like to talk about all things crafty. We do things like sewing, decoupage, embroidery, and knitting, and just about any type of craft. It's just a lot of fun. We like to pull all kinds of ideas, tips, and tricks all together. So if you have an Etsy shop or maybe you want to do the next craft fair to try to make some money, this will be a perfect place to just grab some ideas. Or if you're just looking for some gifts ideas for family and friends, this is the perfect place for you. So let's start off by just saying hello to a couple of friends out there. I see Amy, I see Crafting with Robin, Jackie, Judy, Kathy, Marlene. Oh, Kathy's a one, first time for Kathy. So welcome, Kathy. Thanks for joining. We've got Marlene. We've got Robin's quilt basket. I see one minute tips and not sure if I missed a couple. It kind of scrolled a little fast, so I, I may have missed you, but I'll try to get you on later on. So thank you again for joining. I really appreciate it. Now, if you notice at the top of the hour, we do start off with some trivia questions. Uh, what we do is every Saturday when we have our live Saturday Crafternoon, we do trivia questions and we keep track of who answered the questions correctly. And it's kind of a little competition that we have going on out there. And we do give out a little gift quarterly for the ones with the most points. So each question is a point and we do tally up the points after each live and we put the results out on the community chat. So I'm hoping that you guys can see who's the top crafter out there and you know got a little competition going on with everyone there so at the end of this quarter we'll be giving a little uh, gift out to the top person there and we do that every quarter so we look forward to doing that and then at the end of the year we'd like to do the trivia champion so that one's like just a little extra special so i really hope that you guys enjoyed the questions today i think we found them pretty easy um couple of them you've seen before so if you tune into our channel and you see some of the stuff that we talk about you should be able to answer some of these questions and sometimes we like to just throw some new stuff out there that we found that people maybe were not thinking of or maybe there are types of crafts that are done in other parts of the world which are absolutely amazing and we always want to kind of give you guys that information as well so let's see did i miss anything oh our holidays so i'm a big holiday person i love my holidays so what holidays do we have for today so it is small business saturday which is a big one and I'm sure that there's tons of small businesses that are out there, including those Etsy shops and online ones. So if you can support your local small business shop, I'm sure they would really much appreciate that. Um, it is also play day with dad. So <laughs> it's just a kind of one of those odd holidays, but hey, you can have a play day with your dad, you know, do something special with your dad. It's just a fun um, holiday. And it is also one month, exactly one month from Christmas Day. So we've got one month to today to get all of our crafting done, all our gifts and all that stuff that you get done for Christmas. I know Thanksgiving is um pretty much over and everyone was getting ready for thanksgiving with all the cooking and the things and i'm sure that everyone is kind of a little exhausted from that i know i was um had to kind of just take a day to just relax but um thanksgiving absolutely amazing we love being with family friends we had tons of food and i'm sure that everyone out there had a great time i hope you all enjoyed being with family and friends as well. It's super important. Um, you just don't know when they're not going to be there. 
For us, it was the first time that we had Thanksgiving without my dad. So it was a little difficult and a little odd not having him there. So, you know, it's a little emotional for us, but, you know, we got through it and, and we're looking forward to changing things up and creating new memories as we go along. So lots of fun there. So I hope you guys really enjoyed yourself. Let me know what your favorite part of Thanksgiving was. Um, if you did anything special, maybe a craft or something with the kids. I know um, last week we did um, we did a, a couple of things last week and we provided a little coloring book for the kiddos for Thanksgiving. So there were free PDF downloads um, that you were able to get. And um, hopefully some of you guys use some of those, keep the little kiddos busy while you guys were cooking away. <laughs> so I hope that you guys had fun with that. Uh, let's see, I think I got everything out of the way. Now, we talked about last week and we talked about um, the coloring books, but we also talked about doing fabric books. And these were some of the samples that we looked at last week so if you didn't get a chance to tune into that video um you can just kind of scroll back i think that was live number 65 today's number 66 um and we just basically walked through how you can make a fabric book and it's just absolutely really easy to do and we talked about how you can customize it and make one of your own so i hope you guys really enjoyed that if you didn't get a chance to see that just go ahead and go back to see that one um but this week i wanted to kind of um kind of change things up a little bit and i wanted to do something in terms of bags so I'm a big bag maker. I love to make bags, purses, pouches, you know, all kinds of things like that. So um, I thought I would share with you a couple of things that you could use to make your bags. And then I can just kind of show you some that I've been using. Some of them are typical items that you'll see out there at your local craft store and some of them are not. So you can have some unusual things that you can use to make bags. So I thought that, you know, this would be really fun to do, especially if you're looking for little gifts to give out for family and friends and um, you can have little bags and things that they could use and, and it will be quite practical. So <laughs> let's see. Alrighty, I see a lot of people in the chat chatting away. Awesome, I absolutely love that. If you're new, go ahead and just say hello and start chatting away. Um, I think you guys really enjoy, you know, sharing tips and tricks and ideas and, and talking about all kinds of stuff. So really great. Okay, so what I want to start off with is one item that I was able to pick up from Timu. And this is a soft vinyl that was relatively very inexpensive. Um, don't remember what the footage was yeah it doesn't really say on here on how much you get but it's pretty much it's a roll that you'll get quite a lot you can make a few projects with this you can make your zippered pouch you can make your, your bag now the reason why I like the vinyl is when I think about the bottom of a bag sometimes people place the bag you know maybe be on the floor or on tables or you know it's kind of a rough part of the bag so the bag is always rubbing up against either a floor or a table or something so it's kind of nice to have a more tough material on the bottom of the bag to support all of that movement that happens and i think the vinyl would be a perfect match to work with along with a coordinating fabric so this is something that i you know like to work with um, this is pretty neat you don't have to use vinyl but i think it's kind of nice to mix and match the vinyl with the fabric and then just sew it together if you find a nice color that coordinates with it you can really make a beautiful bag but i wanted to share that with you with timo you and actually get some of the vinyl that's pretty cheap out there so if your local craft store doesn't have it, you can check it out there too. This is the one that I was able to pick up. I did pick up another one. It kind of looked nicer um, on the, let me just take it out here. Kind of looked nicer on the picture, but 
not too bad. So it's kind of along the same type of lines in terms of a design, just a little bit lighter and thought I can mix and match with different fabrics on that. So I just wanted to kind of show those to you guys because I think that would make a nice bag with a coordinating fabric that you could use. It is very soft, so it will work nicely on your sewing machine and will flow through well. Pretty thin, really not that thick at all, so it will not gum up your needle. It will be a nice way to kind of coordinate it. Now, let me see. I think I have a question out there. Oh, what? Judy Bauer says, what size needle to sew on faux leather and what kind of thread? Well, um, let me see if I have it out here. Well, I, I use, I believe I use the 90, 90, 12 um, needle on mine. And the thread that I use was one that I just had on hand. It was actually a quilting cotton one. Let me see if I find it in the back here. I'll show you a couple. This isn't exactly the color, but um, you can pick up, and I believe this was in Joanne's, Americana Quilting Thread. And this is one that you can pick up from Joanne's. Um, this is just a holiday red that I have. I use it a lot, especially at this time of the year. So I bought like a massive amount of it um, last year. And I have some left over and I'm using some of it this year. So I wouldn't pick up the red, but um, it's called Holiday Red. If you're interested. But I think this is a nice, strong quilting cotton that I use. And the, you can also have the Gooderman thread. That one's a nice thread that you could use with it. Or you can just use the basic. This is just an all-purpose thread that you could pick up at your local Walmart. Now, I wouldn't focus so much on the thread that you use. I mean, it's good to have a good quality cotton thread because you want that strength. It is a bag that's going to have a lot of pressure. What I would really focus on is the type of stitching that you use. I would make sure that you use a construction stitch. So you don't want the width to be more than two and a half. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to sew a three inch with this because that two and a half, or if you could go even lower, you know, you'd be do a two, you could do that too. But the construction stitch that you use is really what you want to give it that strength to hold the whole project together versus something like, let's say you were doing a decorative type stitch or a top stitch, then you can use something like three, three and a half, even a four, if you want your stitches to be longer. So you want to make sure that when you're putting the bag together, that when you are constructing something and you know that it be where you are sewing is going to have some kind of pressure on it, you want the stitch to hold. So you do what's called a construction stitch. And so you make that stitch length shorter. You really don't want it to be long because you want it to be as strong as possible. Now, versus if you're just top stitching something, or you can either use a decorative stitch or you can use a longer stitch because you don't necessarily need it to be strengthening something. It's a looser type stitch that is not going to have so much, um, so much strength pulling on it. If you know what I mean. Hope that helped. Okay, so these are the ones. I particularly used a quilting thread on mine, um, but I didn't use vinyl in the example that I showed you because I got the vinyl too late. I was kind of waiting on it and it came too late. So I went ahead and just made the bag. But I'm going to show you some other unusual items that you can use as well. So this is vinyl. This is just one. Let me just roll this back up and you can see the other side. It's very, very thin, very thin. So it's very easy to sew through. Now, if you guys remember, um, gosh, I think it was a couple months back, I went to the Orlando area 
and I visited the um, sewing store there, the superstore, and they had a ton of this vinyl. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me just grab some water. I'm feeling that tickle. <clears throat> so sorry. Okay. Getting that little tickle on my throat so I knew my voice was going to start to give out. <laughs> so when you visit those stores, these super stores, the sewing super stores that have tons of stuff, they had a whole section just on vinyl. Tons of it. <clears throat> I'm sorry. So I was able to kind of pick up some of that and I'm going to show you a kit that I picked up that I have yet to do. But it does. And it have it. And these are all kinds of kits that you can pick up just to make bags. So if you have a hard time maybe trying to design it and construct it uh, on trying to figure out the bag yourself and you want something that's kind of pre-made other than getting like patterns and maybe you can get um, you can go to your local store and get like the simplicity brands that you can pick up at Walmart on how to make bags and they have the patterns and things and instructions. Maybe you prefer to do something like that. Um, or you can just pick up bag kits. And this is a bag kit that I was able to pick up. And in this bag kit, pretty much has everything that you need, but it also has the vinyl as well. And this is the vinyl that comes in this particular kit. And you can see it's not all that much. I mean, this one is folded. I'm sorry, not folded. It is cut in half. So you really don't need all that much vinyl. You're only going to put it on like the bottom half unless you have something else that you want to do. So here's one where you can see here's a picture where the red vinyl on the bottom of the bag, that's what helps support the bag. So really what you're going to need is that construction stitch that's going to bind your fabric with the vinyl together and you want to make sure that that construction stitch is super strong so you can see here it comes with the instructions the webbing it gives you the material as well the lining fabric so you have everything that you need in the kit in order to make the bag that you are wanting to make which is really nice so you don't have to buy the vinyl or anything separate everything comes included so there's an idea to just you know, get a bag kit if you don't want to have to try to construct your own bag. So that's one idea for you. Then we have other types of bags where if you're into quilting, you have a quilt as you go bag. This is one that um, I haven't done this yet. I kind of did a some type of bag like this but I kind of freehanded I didn't know anything about these kits or quilts as you go things so um, found out about it later but it's really simple and it has the batting inside the kit itself and the batting itself is marked for you so let me just show you what the batting would look like and this one comes with the webbing as well for the straps which is really nice. Okay. And when you open up the batting, you're going to see all the numbers on here. And it's basically just like it says, quilt as you go. So if you have jelly rolls or two and a half inch strips that you want to kind of get rid of, you know, you could definitely do a project like this that will just, you know, take away all of those. All of those extra fabrics that you have going around. OK, let me just jump in here. I see. Oh, Marlene says I have not made a bag. Need to learn how. Oh, Marlene, so easy and so much fun. Where can you get the kit? Okay, so there's different places you can get it. Um, like I said, I went to the Fabric Superstore. Um, let me see the proper name. I always forget the name. Because they do have a website as well. If you don't live in the Orlando area, it's called the Sewing Studio Fabric Superstore. 
They have a website. You can order things from there as well. They do classes. Um, so if you live in that area, it's nice. It's it's really, really nice. The, the, the studio has just about everything that you need. Tons of fabrics, all the notions, all the gadgets. I mean, I had a blast there. I did meet one of our subscribers there, and um, that's Judy. And we, we just had a blast. We, we were there for hours and it didn't even feel like hours, but we were. <laughs> but you can pick it up th online. You can just Google um, bag kits. You can probably find some maybe from Amazon. I'm not sure. I picked this one up at, um, this is by June Taylor. Uh, I want to say this was either in Hobby Lobby or could have been... I don't think it was Walmart. I think it was at the Hobby Lobby. Um, but you may want to check Walmart to see. Sometimes they may have little kits too. It kind of, I guess, depends on your Walmart. Some are bigger than others. Um, but these Quilt As You Go kits, so easy to do. You really literally just follow the numbers on here. Like everything is numbered. You put your fabric down and you're sewing on the batting. So you don't have to go back later and then try to quilt the whole the batting to your fabric right you the old way of doing it is you would take your fabrics sew them together so all your strips would be sewn together and then after you've done that you would put the batting and you would sew to attach the batting to your bag that's not the case anymore they have these little kits now that quilt as you go and the patterns are kind of like drawn onto the batting so all you have to do is line up your fabric with the numbers and then just sew with the batting really really neat i really love this it's a lot of fun um, but i did it kind of on my own when i did the very first one that i did i kind of just freehanded didn't know that there was a kit or maybe these came out later i'm not even sure but i am um, I did a bag that was very similar to this. I did use batting and I still use it today in my car. <laughs> it was really um, just to help carry a lot of groceries. So it's a pretty long bag. So probably see that in one of my other videos. If you want to check that out, just look at um, tote bags. Um, you'll, I'm sure you'll see it out there. But this is another idea that you could do where you would just quilt it as you go. And you can see here, me try to take it out of the plastic and I'll give you a close-up of that you can see the type of bags that you can make so really cute if you have those coordinating fabrics you can mix and match colors I mean it's really nice you can really make some beautiful things and and as you can see here if you take a look at the straps that they have they put the fabric on the straps so you have the webbing that they give you and then what you can do is you put the fabric over that and you can even put some batting so that you have a little bit of cushion on your shoulder and then you just close it up and so now your straps are going to be matching the fabrics that you pick or you can just do a coordinating fabric strap right doesn't necessarily have to be the same color i mean you can just go to town with this this is just so many ideas that can pop into your head. You could embellish it. You can just go crazy with this stuff. So definitely something nice that you can put together for these bags. These are really quick projects. I think you can probably do this project in an afternoon. It really is not that much time consuming. It's since you are quilting on the batting, it makes things so much faster. And you can just do this in a day. This really can be one of those quick and easy projects that if you want to make for someone, they can be done really easy. And I think for a beginner, especially, you can definitely make this. So all you need to know is how to stitch straight. <laughs> and even have lines to help you with that. So <laughs> definitely something that you can do. Let's seen any other questions out there on this because there's so much more I want to show you let me try to stick this back in the bag I'll just do halfway and kind of do the rest after 
Okay. Actually, I'll put that over here. Okay, so there's all kinds of bags that you can make. Big ones, little ones, you know, longer ones, duffel bags. Um, these are just a couple that I've made. And this is with um, Crafty Gemini. I love her bag clubs, absolutely amazing. Made a cute little pouch with a coordinating fabric on the inside. And I used some hardware on here. So we've got like, the hardware would be like some D-rings and we've got the little clip here. And it just has the little zipper in the front. So quick, easy, nice lining. Very practical. Now the strap itself, there's different things you can use. I use this black webbing on this one here. Same kind of ideas, just different fabrics with the interior. You can use different types of zippers. So if you want to do same colors, kind of like this one has that green coordinating with the fabric. This one went with the white, but you can change it up. You have the rainbow zippers. You have all kinds of stuff, you know, that you can use. So you could make a whole bunch of little bags like this, different webbings with different colors. You can do the white strap or you can do like we were just um, were talking about doing a fabric strap and i'll show you an example of that on um, another bag that's coming up and then you can just go ahead you use about 29 inches of the webbing that should be enough at least for me it's enough it really will depend you know on your your height and all that and where you like your bag to sit so just measure it out over your shoulder and then just kind of play with it until you get the um width that you want on this or the length that you want on this and then you can go ahead and attach this to your bag so it's really nice simple project yet another great gift people always can use little zipper pouches i think they are amazing now i decided to go ahead and quilt some of these so you do see the little diamond shape quilting on here I used a coordinating thread so you can see here that it worked well. And then on the blue one, I decided to just go with diagonals and I quilted that. So you could quilt your fabric before you make your bag or you can just leave it as the fabric as is. It's totally up to you. It's just another idea that I have for the bag itself. So you can use quilting cotton for your bags to make little bags or big bags. You could use the vinyl or you could do a combination of both, having the vinyl on the bottom and the quilting cotton on the top. Or you can maybe do a, a slither of it on the top. It's, you know, just different ideas that I wanted to give you just to be able to think out of the box on your typical bag. Don't just think that you have to just use your quilting cotton to make the bags. You can mix and match with different materials and it'll really make your bag stand out from the rest. Um, other things that you can do is maybe embroider something on the bag before you attach, start um, putting your bag together and constructing it. You know, as you got your, your different pieces, like I went ahead and I quilted these. So instead of quilting it, I could have also just did an embroidery on the front. Maybe put a name on it if I wanted. You know, there's so many things that you can do with so many different embroidery files that are out there. So that's another idea that you could do. Once you have that embroidered and you have all your pieces ready to go, then you would just go ahead and start constructing the bag. And so once you put the pieces together and have your ending product you just have to kind of make sure that your embroidery whatever you embroidered a flower or whatever it is that it's positioned in the right place so make sure you give yourself some wiggle room on the fabric itself to be able to make sure that that is positioned correctly before you actually stitch and make the markings or do the cutting for your bag so that's something that um little idea for you so I want to get over to the fabrics that I used for 
this next bag, um, I used this fabric right here. I believe I bought this in Hobby Lobby. Um, it's just a pretty little fabric. I thought it was nice, had really nice colors to it. And then I needed a coordinating fabric so for the interior lining. So I went ahead and went with this one here. It's got these little speckles to it. I thought it just went well with it for the interior side. So this is what I went with. And then the bag that I made now was also with the Crafty Gemini's club but what i loved about this bag is that there's no zippers no zippers it's curvy i mean it's it's it was just a nice bag i love the size of it i can fit a lot of things on it and it was so easy to do so so easy so let me just grab that and this is the bag So this is a really nice beginner friendly bag. So if you haven't taken her classes, she's an absolutely amazing teacher. Her name is Crafty Gemini. If you haven't checked her out, she um, has these courses that you can take um, and you can purchase the instructions later on. I think after the, the course ends, then I think she puts them out there so you're able to buy them. But what i love about this bag is the curves that you learn to make and i like how the bag has that curve and it has these rivets here i'm sorry the slips here and she teaches you how to kind of just snip them and then sew them that really makes that nice curve on the bag so i use that exterior fabric that you saw then for the interior of the bag do see and you know what i really love look at this the bag stands on its own it's amazing like it's literally standing on its own and i think that that right there is amazing that for that to happen usually doesn't happen with a lot of bags they usually just kind of flop over but if you really make them with these edges and being that this is a curved bag i love the way it just kind of sits so it's really nice but you have your interior i also have a little pocket on the inside i use the fabric from the exterior just to make the pocket so that's in here and i like the way the fabric kind of just sits inside it's not bulky it's like perfect in terms of like it not having too much bulk in there it's perfect it's like the perfect size and the the bag itself is really nice because it, it's a nice size for me you know i'm i'm one that tends to carry things like you know you carry your cell phone you carry so many things and it's just a nice size where i can fit those things and get it pretty easily without fumbling through all kinds of things so I really liked how this one turned out. I did use a tiny piece of um, scrap fabric that I had laying around just for the inlay. And that was just the piece that I did here. So that's what I did here. And then in terms of the strap itself, the strap itself, I went ahead and I have about a one inch webbing here. And what I did was I took the exterior fabric because I didn't want to have just um white webbing showing on the back so i didn't like how that looked i wanted it to kind of keep that same fabric all the way around so i wrapped the fabric around the webbing and then i just went ahead and stitched two lines all the way across and so that's what kind of made my strap now what you could also do is if you wanted to give this as a gift, I would recommend maybe using a slider. And so a slider will allow you to adjust the height of the strap itself because, you know, some people like it 
further up some people like it further down some people want to you know have the purse going across their body um, so there's different ways people like to wear their bags so you are not sure if the strap is going to be enough this is about 29 inches in terms of the um, length but I think for me anyway this is the perfect size that I need for it to fall really nicely you know under my shoulder so this one's a nice size for me but if I were making this as a gift I would probably recommend putting a slider on here so that they can adjust it to however they are comfortable with so that's what um, I would recommend and getting familiar with these little hardware items you know so you have your d rings you have your sliders you have your lobster clasp which is lobster clasp would be like what we have here or it has the little all right and here's your little this is a about a half inch d ring here so these are the types of materials that are really good to have if you're into bag making you're going to use a lot of these um, so i ha do have a little stash of those um, along with the webbing of course um, and other things like you don't necessarily have to use webbing for your straps right you could just use the fabric itself fold it onto itself stitch it and you can easily do that as well but that was my bag that i made with her club but I also decided that I wanted to find a way to make something very inexpensive, not using fabric since the price of fabric has skyrocketed um, lately, not using fabric and not using vinyl. I wanted to make a bag out of just something else. So I went to my local Dollar Tree and I did find these fabric placemats now i think the dollar tree really up their placemats this year they have a beautiful setting that coordinates with this the dish the dishes and everything coordinates together with this type of design um, and i thought it was really nice and on the back side they are lined so it does have a very pretty lining it was very well put together i think it's really really nice so I wanted to see if I can make a bag out of these placemats because guess what guys it has a beautiful design on the outside and it already has the lining so it's amazing like this is could be a really cute bag so I went ahead and got a couple of these um, from the dollar store so I did take two of them and I really didn't need to do much you can literally have a bag done in like 10 minutes I mean it was that fast so so easy to make guys this is really amazing so all you do is you take your Dollar Tree placemats get these really nice fabric ones that have the lining on they have different designs this is just the one that I picked and then you're going to take the two placemats and you're going to face them right sides together so you've got your design, making sure that, you know, you're not, you're, you're reading it the same way. So make sure it's directionally correct when you put it on top of each other. So they're both facing the same way. Go ahead and put them together. And then I wanted this to be the top of the bag, right? So the handles will be here. So you could do it that way or if you want it like a really deep bag you could go this way with a different type of um of design obviously because the words would be sideways you wouldn't want that but take a look at the designs that they have out there because they have some really neat ones and i could take this bag and then all you have to do if you know how to do a straight stitch that's all you got to do you will start off on one corner i would back stitch on here reinforce that stitch do a nice construction seam so two and a half inch take it all the way down and you can do 
a quarter inch seam or you can do a half inch seam. It's totally up to you. Now, what you're going to do later is to reduce the bulk. So don't worry about what you want to use. It really doesn't matter. If you want to do the quarter inch, that's fine. I'll use up more of the fabric so you'll have a slightly bigger bag. So it's just, you know, that quarter inch, the extra bag that you're going to have versus the half inch here. If you want to kind of stay away from all the bulk here, you can do the half inch. It's totally fine. But go ahead and back stitch on the top. Take this all the way down. Leaving your needle down, you can pivot on your machine. Then take it all the way down to the next corner. Pivot it again. Come all the way back up and then back stitch to finish it off. Once you do that, you're going to have all three sides sewn together at the two and a half inch. And you're going to have this opening here, which is going to be the top of your bag. Now, at that point, your bag is pretty much done. <laughs> you really don't have to do very much, but you're going to want to install some handles, right? So there's different things that you can use for the handles themselves. Hang on here. Okay. So there's a couple things that you can get. If you have fabric that you want to use that coordinates with this, you can just use the fabric. Fold it in half, fold it again onto itself, do a nice little stitch, just like I did with this handle here, right? So you'll have a nice stitching, and I don't know if you can see the stitching on it, You can barely see it there, but you have a nice long stitch going down this way. And then on the opposite side, there's a stitch going down here. And I take that all the way down. So you use the fabric. If you want to have the webbing and then the fabric on top, then you can just buy the webbing, then wrap the fabric around it and do it that way as well. What you can do, and, and this kind of can be a challenge sometimes, is if you're going to use the webbing and then wrap it, the fabric around the webbing, you can try glue basting some of it. So just take, if you have fabric glue, fabric glue sticks or just fabric glue, or you could even use Elmer's glue, which is just the regular um, school glue. Here we go. I, I think everyone pretty much has this glue lying around their house, right? You're not going to use a ton of glue. You're not going to splatter it all over. You just do some glue dots and then just take a dry iron and hit it with the iron. That'll anchor the fabric down in place so that then you can take it to your sewing machine and go ahead and do that stitch. So it's just a way of kind of holding it in place so you don't have to fumble around with trying to wrap it together and sew it at the same time. I found that to be easy, but that's just a little tip for you guys for when you're sewing it and wanting to use the fabric. You can totally just use the webbing. They also have the elastics that are there. You can wrap your fabric around the elastic as well. And then I found, um, They've got this metallic elastic waistband that it's elastic as well. So you could use that, but it has like a little shimmer to it. And this is by Dritz. And the width of it is pretty big. This is about one and three fourths of an inch. So you could kind of fold it in half and stitch it down if you want to make it um, smaller. But, you know, it's a pretty thick strap. And it's a pretty large bag, so I thought, you know, it's this wouldn't be too bad of a size. So that's just another idea. So once I've done that, I've sewn my three sides. You can put your handles on. You'll want to also clip your corners. So once you have sewn all three sides, you're going to take the two ends that are the bottom of the bag and you're going to go to the corners and you're going to clip the corners. 
and that's going to help reduce the bulk so when you turn the bag inside out you'll have more of a nice squared corner on the end so that's something that i started to do and i haven't finished it because i just literally did it a few minutes ago and you can see here here is the bag right here is the lining and let me just take these clips off here let me turn it inside out for you so you can see pop out the corners and you can see here how you have a very simple stitch so again put the placemats facing each other go ahead and do a nice back stitch on the front bring it all the way down pivot come across pivot again come up to the top and do a back stitch here then I went ahead and I clipped the corners so you can see here I just took the scissors you're just clipping just a little bit you want to make sure that you do not nip your actual stitches right so make sure that these stitches are still in place just nip that little end right here you can also if you wanted to reduce more bulk you can also take your scissors and go down the line here and just cut those pieces off because you have your stitch that's holding the bag together so a nice straight seam going all the way across then all you have to do flip the bag inside out you can grab a little chopstick or if you have those little turning tools or that little purple thing <laughs> that everyone seems to have just use your fingers go ahead and poke out the corners and then do the same thing on the other corner i'm just going to use my fingernails for right now And then once you have turned it inside out, you have a really cute bag that has a beautiful lining on the inside and you didn't even have to line it yourself. I mean, it was like, wow. And since it's a fabric um, placemat, you know, it's, it's just fabric and it has a really pretty design on it. Now all it needs are some straps. So you've got this here, nice and clean nice clean seam there all the way on the bottom as well going across and then going across the other way so really easy to do it really doesn't take long at all and now all you have to decide is what you want to do with the straps now what i would do is give this a nice press after you've turned it inside out, go ahead and give it a nice press on the iron, right? Just kind of with your fingers, make sure you're on the edges, make sure you're poking out those corners nicely. Um, I would recommend to either use the chopstick or use the little turning tool if you have one. Um, but just by poking it out, you can see you can get a little bit more so you get that nice edge. So you have that nice squared bottom there, right? So cute little bag right here. You can either, if you wanted to add a zipper, you can do a zipper on the top by just, you know, adding the zipper before you sew the construction, this together, you can just add the zipper here. You could do that as well. Um, and then you can just take your strap, take your bag and line it up on your cutting mat. And then all you're going to want to do is grab your little sewing clips. I use these right here, or you can use pins, whatever you're more comfortable with. And then you can go ahead and just measure, maybe you do about three inches or so. Just go ahead and put in wherever you want your strap. Go ahead and clip that in. Make sure this is nice and straight. You know, you're going to want to measure this. So this one's extremely long, so we don't want the strap that long, but I would have cut it. And then you're just going to measure from this distance about three inches as well. And then go ahead and put that in. 
and clip it. I'm going to put the excess in here and cut that later. Just so I can show you guys. Alright, so once you do that, you're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. And then just kind of lay it down on the table. Make sure that your straps on both sides line up so that they are symmetrical here. And that's pretty much it that you'll need for the straps. So I'm not sure what you guys think. If you have any other ideas, let me know. Because there's all kinds of different things that you can use for the strap. So, you know, this is really cute. It's a cute little bag that you can have for the holidays, you know, really easy to make, <laughs> literally just takes you a few minutes. Um, I think just deciding on the strap itself, you know, the other thing you could do is I could fold this in half here and make it thinner. If I didn't want my strap to be so thick, I can do a thinner strap, right? Versus having the thick one like that, you know, or like I said, you could do what I did with the other bag and just kind of make your strap by putting the fabric on top. So let me know, let me know what do you guys think. So, oh, I see Mar says some hot fix rhinestones would be nice too. Yes, Marge, that would look really cute. Add a little bling to it, right? Yeah, why not? You can do some rhinestones and add that. Kind of little bling bling on there. I like that idea. Absolutely, you can do that. You know, you can also embroider on it too. Add some embroidery. Now, for the embroidery part, if you wanted to embroider it and you don't want to ruin the lining on the inside, before you actually sew it all together, what you could do, let me just grab one here. What you could do is just open up the seam and separate your lining from the exterior, right? Because you've got the two pieces. Go ahead and open it, separate it, go ahead and embroider, put it on your machine, embroider it, and then sew it back together again. That way the back of the embroidery and the threads and all that won't show. It'll be on the inside and the lining will cover it. And then all you have to do is just, you know, you don't even have to sew it back together. When you construct the bag itself and you do that sew, you'll already be sewing it together. So it's not that way you don't have two lines of stitching going across because you've opened it up. Just go ahead and construct the bag. And when you sew it, it'll sew it shut. So you won't have to worry about that. Um, so you won't see that extra line. So I think that's a nice way of doing it. They did have another one. Let's see if I can grab that one here. This one it was it was a little plain. <clears throat> so I, I really loved this one. I thought it was very very pretty. Um, like I said, I think they really upscaled their uh, little designs this year. But they did have a plain one, and this one I'm kind of hard to see. I'll try to move it around so you can see maybe the shimmer of it. It's a little, it's got a little bit of shimmer in it, but it's very plain. It's just snowflakes, right? But if you're looking for kind of a blank canvas type thing that you can embroider or do your rhinestones on, you know, this one is, it, it's a nice background fabric and then you can just add stuff to it. You can just add it and it already has the lining as well. So instant bag that you can make in no time. So, you know, I thought I wanted to just bring those ideas to you guys. Let you guys know that, you know, something that you can do for a really quick little bag. If you wanted to make that, um, I hope you guys really enjoyed it and you know, it's just little ideas. So let me know, guys, if you guys have any ideas on this to do as well. Like Marge said, um, you can use the rhinestones, you know, why not? You know, try other ideas as well. You can embellish it with some piping. Let's say you wanted to include piping on the bag. When you go to sew it together, you would include the piping as well. So you would do basically um, right size together right 
let's say it would be like this. You'd have your other one here. So you'd have right sides together and then you would add the piping on the in between and sandwich the piping in between the two. And then you would take your sewing machine and go ahead and sew it. So when you turn it inside out, your edges would have the piping on the end. That would be a nice little touch as well, just to kind of elevate it and give it that extra nice touch on the bag, right? Um, rhinestones, like Marge said, embroidery, uh, lace, ribbon, so many different things that you can use. There's rickrack everywhere that you can also add to it. So let's see. Oh, crafting with Robin said would have to wait until they restock after this busy weekend. Yes, yes, definitely. But they check it out. They do have some really nice ones out there and you can really make some nice bags. The other thing that you can do besides if you didn't want them, just make this square. You can also when you are sewing it, you can kind of increase and I'll, I'll kind of do this by hand so you could kind of see how it would go you could increase your seam allowance and just kind of continue doing that and guess look at how the bag changes i'm going to try to just do it with my hands here see how that just changed the look of the bag now it has that triangle form on here really easy to do just increase your your seam allowance as you're doing your stitch you go across when you're doing your sides just continue to increase that seam allowance and you'll have that triangle type look to the bag super cute super easy so much fun to make and a great little gift and if you wanted to throw in some things in there to give to someone you can do that as well again with the strap you can even embroider on the strap itself right you can put some embroidery going all the way across really really easy to do very inexpensive already has the lining in place cost of fabric is going up so this is just one of those great ideas to do that really is just low budget and you can make a ton of these and sell them and i think people will love them so that's it guys that's all i had for you today and i hope that you guys really enjoyed it if you end up making any of these go ahead and put it on our facebook group because i would love to see what everyone makes and all the different choices that they make on the straps and the fabrics and things like that so thank you again for joining and i hope to be crafting with you soon bye everyone